Hi everyone, it's Stephanie. And today I'm gonna to talk about doing your nails with shaky hands. Through my time as a nail artist, I've heard a lot of people say they can't paint their nails because their hands are too shaky. And while I do think that is true for some people, I think that most people with shaky hands can learn to paint their nails successfully. So I'm gonna give you my tips and tricks for stabilizing your hands and getting a great manicure, even if you're a little shaky. Let's go. All right, here we are. Apologies for the weird nail shape on my left hand. I actually just broke this nail on a diagonal. And so I decided to kind of be weird for a while before I go down to my normal nail shape. So happy Halloween. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do if you are trying to paint your nails and you have shaky hands is find a bottle with a good grip. You don't necessarily need to do this, but I think that it's always a good idea if you are really struggling from having shaky hands to have a bottle that is really easy to grip. So here I have Orly's Dance With Me. Um, now Orly is probably my favorite brand and their bottles have these amazing grippy, wide, tapered, rubberized caps. They almost never get stuck. I don't think I've ever had to really work on getting them open and closed. They're really easy to hold on to. Their brushes can be a touch inconsistent, but they have this nice kind of rounded paddle shape at the bottom. And that's something that you also want to look for is a bottle brush that isn't too just flat on the end. Now, my like least favorite brush is the one that OPI has. It's just a very flat square. It's really hard to kind of get into the nooks and crannies of your cuticles. And Orly's got a really good brush. Another brand that I think is pretty good for people with shaky hands is Hollow Taco. And you have the benefit of this being Hollow Taco, a very fashionable brand and a brand with a lot of really exciting finishes. Although Orly is really stepping up their game when it comes to exciting finishes. They also have these rubberized caps. Very rarely do they get fully stuck. And depending on the finish that you're getting, you'll either get a skinny brush like this, which if you're someone like Christine from Hollow Taco, who has really thin nails, that might be something that's worth it to you. But also some of them come with a wider brush. But the really nice thing about Hollow Taco is that they sell additional brushes. So if you have one brush you prefer over the other, you can always buy a set of those brushes to replace your hollow taco brush with. Today though, I am gonna be using this Orly over here. Another thing you might want to consider, and that's why I've chosen these two colors today, is a color that is close to your skin tone. That way any kind of mess ups that you have will be a lot less easy to spot on your nail if your cuticle line isn't perfect, if it goes over a little bit, if anything like that happens, something a little closer to your skin tone will kind of hide some of those problems. Now you might want to wear black nail polish or something, and I think that that's cool even if it doesn't have a perfect nail line. But if you're just trying to look polished for an interview or you wanna hide dirty nails, this one actually has a little bit of dirt under it, then something close to your skin tone will be probably the easiest for you to work with. What I would recommend more than anything though, if you are worried about them looking not neat and tidy, is to not go for colors that are known for staining. So the colors that are known most for staining are things like red, teal, and black. Although the one that I've used that stained absolutely the worst was an orange polish, but that's really not par for the course. But yeah, right here, this is Dance With Me by Orly and Peach Tea by Hollow Taco. And these are two really beautiful nude tones that you could use. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do, and let me bring back my camera just a little bit so you kind of get a better view of how my hands are situated, is you want to be in front of a really nice stable surface. So something like a kitchen table or even a nice work desk. Right now we're at my nail desk where I stream and film my videos, obviously. So it just has a nice area for you to keep your hands nice and stable. I have a friend who also has shaky hands. Their name is Vero. And they find that when they can't find a stable surface that they can kind of anchor their hands like this. And I'll show you a picture and that that helps them. But they also recommend if you can get a table, use a table, that's gonna be your best bet. So once you are nice and stable, grab yourself some base coat. I always recommend base coat and top coat. 
Today, I am going to be using Orly Bonder base coat, and this is gonna get pretty monotonous, but you're gonna put down the base coat, just kind of go almost to the base of your nail, push it back just a tiny bit, and then pull it up. Now, for cleanup's sake, uh, you might want to kind of keep back from the cuticle a little more than you might initially have wanted to. But if you do flood your cuticles or go a little bit over, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I am going to artificially kind of mess up my nails when I get to the color. So you'll see that in just a second. Also, let me take a moment to show you the best way to paint your thumb. Now... I think the best way to paint your thumb, if you do have shaky hands, is to grip the edge of your table. Sometimes I'm able to grip a nail polish bottle to kind of give me some stability, but I really only do that because I do paint my nails on Twitch and I want people to see what I'm doing. But if I were at home and I didn't need to really be at the center of somebody's screen, I would just grab onto the edge of the table and paint my thumb right over the edge. If I just got into my cuticle a little bit, that is fine. We are going to fix that a little bit later. Now that that's done, we are going to go in with Orly's Dance With Me. I'm not sure I've actually ever used this polish on its own, but I do love this collection. So we're going to do what we were doing before. And like I said, because this is a nice nude color, not exactly matching my skin tone, but very, very uh, close to my skin tone. Any mistakes that we make aren't going to be that noticeable. And something to remember is that pretty much any mistake you made isn't going to be all that noticeable to just, you know, people you generally see. If someone's looking that closely at your nails and they decide to judge you for it, that is really their problem. We're just here to have fun and paint our nails. So let's go to this nail and oops. Oh no, I messed up. I messed up that one. One thing that I forgot to mention is that it's really helpful to anchor your other hand down. Don't let your other hand be up in the air while you're painting. Have it down. You can even put your pinky out because when in doubt, pinky out. But also it does help you just anchor yourself down a little bit more and stop some of that shaking. All right, so right here is going to be an optional step. If you have found that you've made a few little mistakes or big mistakes, and everybody makes mistakes when they paint their nails, even the most pro nail artists you see on Instagram, well, they're not painting their nails perfectly. They are cleaning up after themselves. So what you're gonna want to get is a cleanup brush. And like I said, this is not necessary. We have other ways that we can deal with this, but if you kind of want to go the extra mile, you could do this. And I know that for some people, this isn't going to be something that really works for them because it, you know, you're still shaking, you're having a hard time with the shaking and going into the cleanup brush doesn't seem like it's really going to help that much. We have other ways of dealing with that, but here's just for people who want to know how to do this. You're gonna take your cleanup brush. Now this is my KNI Weed Whacker. It is my absolute favorite cleanup brush. You can see it is very, very well loved. I actually should probably be moving to a new one pretty soon, but these work even if they're pretty well used. A lot of people though will use the ELF concealer brush. You can get it at Target. It doesn't last as long, but it is a little more readily available. I also use these acetone pumps that I get off from Amazon. And I really like these. And I think that they are really an asset to people with shaky hands. Cause one thing, they are really hard to knock over. And even if you do knock it over, it is sealed tight. And so really you're only ever going to spill about a thimble full of acetone. Um, I press down to get the acetone with my brush and sometimes it gets a little overexcited, but generally I can kind of get it in there where it doesn't spurt everywhere, but there usually is a breaking in period. So be mindful of that. I will be putting links, there you go, I almost knocked it over. I'll be putting links to these acetone pumps as well as these brushes in the description below. Also make sure you have a little paper towel. So what you're gonna do is you're going to dip the brush into the acetone, you know, a little bit more, and then go in to clean up. So when you are starting, you might want to just clean up around the outside. 
but cleaning up on the nail itself is actually easier than you might expect. You just have to know where to rest your brush. This is what changed everything for me in regards to cleaning up my manicures, and I actually learned it from Polished Lab Rat here on YouTube, but you just want to rest your brush against your cuticle. Just let that cuticle guide you. You will get better and better at this. I do a little bit of a scrubbing motion, but I actually remember the exact manicure. I was using Orly's Moy Caliente for the first time after I learned how to do this technique and it came out perfect. And before that, I was having such a hard time with cleanup. I would always smudge right through. It would be everywhere, but just resting the brush into the nook of my cuticle made such a huge difference. There's some glitter, actually. I was just wearing Glistening Glow You Glow Girl and got some glitter in there. My thumb also is having a bit of trouble. That's just natural. I didn't force that to happen at all. I have a lot of trouble with my thumbs, actually, but I always say thumbs don't matter. When I take pictures, it's usually just these, just these four. So there is our first coat. Okay, we're gonna go in with another coat. I'm just gonna wipe off the brush on one side and I will go in and kind of, sometimes I push back that first drop, sometimes I dab it and then just go in for the full one, but always get a little bit off your brush and onto your nail. All right, I'm just gonna work it up a little bit and I'm gonna cap my tips. Your nails might be a little too short for you to cap your tips. I can cap my nails at pretty much any length, but I know I'm a little bit special that way and I'm gonna make a video on that eventually. But capping your tips will not only make your manicure last longer, but I think it looks better too. So I always cap my tips. So let's go in, I'm just gonna dab that a little bit and then pull that up, cap the tip. I find that just working the polish, as long as it's not too quickly drying, can really help some of the patchiness that happens. And also make sure that while you're doing this, that you aren't tensing your body up. It may seem counterintuitive because when you're looser, you're kind of wobbling a little bit more, but the more tense your body is, the more you're going to be prone to shaking. And I'm actually having a pretty shaky day. You probably can't tell, but uh, I have been kind of sick and one of the side effects has been shaking. But using these techniques, I'm able to get a really good result. But of course, this is also due to a lot, a lot of practice. So let's go in. I'm going to mess up my nail a little bit more. But I actually think I'm going to want to go in with a third coat because I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thick, you know? I just like them thick. All right, we're going to let these dry a little bit and then we will come back for the top coat. All right, and it is top coat time. So I'm going to be going in with Glisten and Glow's top coat. Glisten and Glow has an amazing quick dry top coat. It's very thin and it dries very, very quickly, very easy to work with. I give my creams a little bit longer than my other finishes to dry because they have this nasty habit of kind of getting themselves on the brush. And I do not like that. So I gave this a little more time than usual. Uh, oftentimes, especially if it was a specialty finish and not a cream, I would just go straight in with top coat. You might be tempted to skip the top coat, and I really would not do that. Most common problems with nail polish smudging, not drying, not lasting, comes down to not using a good top coat. So if you invest in nothing else, invest in that. The top coats that I recommend are, of course, Glisten and Glow. I also love KB Shimmers Clearly on Top. That one is a little bit thicker. Uh, better for glitters or things that you kind of want a gel-like finish on. And then I also use Out the Door, which you can buy a massive bottle for not very much money. It's a little bit more expensive than the other ones, but like I said, it's a massive bottle. That one dries a little bit slower, but you are getting very good value for the money, and it's still a very good quick dry top coat. So go in with your top coat. Make sure to wrap those tips if you are wrapping the tips. Now, after your top coat dries, you're going to want to wait about 
20 minutes to an hour before you really do anything with your hands. This is an excellent time to catch up on YouTube videos. If you are a console gamer and can have your nail steer clear of the controller while you were using it, it's also a pretty good time to do that. But mostly, I just put on something. I watch a video I've been waiting to watch. I watch a series I've been waiting to watch. And then I wait for about an hour to do anything. And then I would say two plus hours before you really do anything heavy duty, like doing, you know, any chores or anything that involves using your nails, scratching. And of course, please, please, please do not open soda cans with your nails. If you don't take any other precautions, please don't do that. Now for the people who didn't do cleanup, this part is for you. Once your polish is fully dry, so two hours or more for this one, go do something in the water. You can wash dishes or take a shower and most of that excess polish will come right off and no one will be any the wiser, especially if you used a color close to your skin tone. For really stubborn polish, I sometimes even use a nail brush to flake it off, but make sure your nails are really, really dry before going down that route. I will have a picture of my nails after I have done that. See right here, I actually did go in too early. So if you look really closely, you can see that I kind of roughed up the edge a bit, but like, look at this from further away. Can you tell, can you tell at all that that one is any different from the other ones? Hardly. So the longer you wait between doing your nails and kind of going into the water and just washing off the excess that way, the more oils and stuff will get under it. And also the more cured, for lack of a better term, your polish will be. The more it'll just dry all the way down and you'll have just a really beautiful finish on your nails. And even up to when I learned how to maneuver the brush, even when I had a cleanup brush, before I figured out how it could work for me, I was still using this method and there is nothing wrong with this method. I always used to say, I just do my nails and then go wash the dishes and it all comes right off. So if you have a special event in a day, you can do your nails, let them fully dry, take your shower in the morning, maybe take a scrub brush to your nails when you're in the shower and all of that will come right off. Your nails will look perfectly fine. So there are the basics, but there are a few optional supplies that you can use to make painting easier. First, there are these sticky nail protectors. So I usually use liquid latex. I like liquid latex because I think it has less of a plastic footprint, but if you really have shaky hands, painting on that liquid latex can be hard for you too. So I don't think there's any shame in doing what is right for you given your abilities. Oh, see the magic of top coat. I just put that on. It did not get messed up while I was working with this. I always mess up my nails when I, before I have top coat on them. So these aren't the best. I got them because they're cheap and I wasn't planning on using them other than for this video. So what you do basically, this is actually the first time that I've used them. You just put them down and you can make a nice little barrier around your nail. This is great for nail art. Uh, doing gradient nail art is really easy if you have shaky hands because you just kind of need to use a sponge and being shaky is almost a, a good thing when you're doing a gradient. And so that will protect your nail. So if you are really all over the place, put this on and once you're done, all you got to do is just grab an edge with your nails or a tweezer and pull that right off. There we go. These are actually better than I thought. The people online said they weren't good, but I think that they were wrong. So there's those. The next tool I recommend is a polish holder. So here I have the Tweeksy hinge and the Tweeksy hinge is a silicone and plastic nail polish holder. And it has this little suction cup on the bottom. I'm sorry, mine's like kind of got some cat hair on it, but it has this suction cup on the bottom that all you have to do is place it down and it fully sucks to any surface. This is a silicone mat on a table. And look, yeah, that's how much force it took me to knock this thing over. And this thing is amazing. It fits just about any nail polish bottle and you won't knock over the bottle when you're using it. And what I love about this that makes me recommend it to people, even if they don't have shaky hands, is that it is on a hinge. And so if you have a nail polish bottle that is empty, 
or almost empty, you can put it on its side, maybe undo the cap first, and get to a little bit more nail polish before you have to either throw out the bottle or, I don't know, add more polish or thinner to it, whatever you're going to do with it. So I think this is a great buy for anybody and it is so stable there, it is so stable. I usually have to pull it off the table to get it off. I love my hinge. It was such a good investment and I kind of got it on a whim. And the third item is a rubber band. Here is a rubber band that is on my years, nay, perhaps decades old bottle of Essie Bulgaria. I'm not sure when they came out with that polish, but I have had this for a while. It is one of the ugliest polishes ever made. I love it. I have two bottles. Anyway, rubber bands are amazing for issues with caps. This is a very old rubber band, but if you are having a hard time opening a cap, Put a rubber band on it and it'll give you the grip, kind of like a rubberized cap or an Orly bottle, and you'll be able to open it. Look at that. Oh, it's so, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Anyway, uh, also, if you, you know, need extra grip, it'll give you a little bit of extra grip. So this is, wow, this is really special to everybody. I'm so glad I chose to open up this bottle of polish. <laughs> Amazing. It's just the one that had a rubber bands around it. Okay. So anyway, that is my last suggestion is if you are having trouble holding on to nail polish bottles, you can use one rubber band. You can use two rubber bands. You can use three rubber bands. You could just make yourself the thickest nail polish bottle cap you've ever seen. Whatever you need, rubber bands will suit those needs. All right. There you have it. Those are all my tips and tricks for painting your nails with shaky hands. Of course, your results may vary, but the more you work on this, the more you will develop your own system that helps you get the results you want when you're painting your nails. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you want to talk to me more directly, then you can come see me on Twitch. I stream several times a week. I might even be streaming right now. I also have a podcast with my friend and fellow nail streamer, Danny Shout. It's called Two Lacquered Ladies, and you can get it wherever you get your podcasts. I'm sure you'll have a great time listening. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.